Hello, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemope. This is Christopher Draves, and this show is for fans, by fans, brought to you by wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you can call them at 414-800-7585, or visit Milwaukee, uh, HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. I almost said that backwards, but it's HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You can get all your hockey essentials, all your referee gear. You can get NHL jerseys from all the Midwest teams. If you visit their store, they'll give you great customer service. You can get your ice skates sharpened. And hey, while you're in there, tell them that we sent you from Milwaukee to Nashville. They know who we are. All right. Um, also, we would like to uh, not we're not asking, but it would be a great thing if you could donate to go, or go to HockeyFightsCancer.com. Uh, and donate to uh, help people who are fighting cancer. Um, everyone's got somebody that's been affected by cancer or something. My cousin died from it. My cousin had it. My grandma died from it. We've all got somebody. We fight. My we uncle fight beat for. prostate cancer. So cancer's affected all of us in some way, shape, or form. It's a good cause. I'd recommend you guys try to make some sort or, of contribution or, to the fight. Or go to any NHL or NHL.com. Go to uh, your favorite team um, and buy a Hockey Fights Cancer jersey. Or a t-shirt or one of their other merchandises that they have. Because all proceeds go to that uh, hockey, hockey Fights Cancer. Uh, is it a foundation or is that just their website? It goes to a, it goes to the Hockey Power Play Foundation. Kind of like the Admirals have the Admirals Power Play Foundation. Yeah. We did our Hockey Fights Cancer jerseys. Um, we wear them during the they wear them during the warm ups. Um, the fans that bidded on the jerseys got to pick who they the players wore on the back of the jerseys, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, Everything's for a good cause. We're trying to kick cancer's ass, people. You know, and we it, really do need to kick cancer's ass. And th th this is the only time we ever really like swear on the show. Cancer's one of those but things seriously, we don't we have to. Kick, we have to kick cancer's ass, guys. Don't just fight it. We have to beat cancer. We and, do. uh, well, not to uh, play on words here, but this game was kind of cancerous. Nah, this game was just garbage, dude. Yeah. Seriously, was... this game was just hot garbage. <sighs> uh, it was a eight, it was a 9-4 uh, avalanche victory. Uh, yeah, Predators, they just did not play well at all. Uh, both goalies got absolutely shredded. Uh, Pekka, he got knocked out in the second period after giving up, what, five goals? Five straight. Or five. He gave, he up, gave up five goals because uh, uh, Saros gave up the last four. Yeah. Um, it was not a good night to be a goalie. His outshot is 45 24. 45 24. That's but that still also says that their goalie wasn't playing that hot either. It's just yeah, they got he more did chances. Yeah, four goals, but damn, we... Man. All right, well, face-off percentage was uh, 53% Predators, uh, 47 Colorado. Uh, Nashville is one for four on the power play. Colorado is two for six. Uh, penalty minutes for 12-8 Nashville. Uh, hits were 22-16, blocks were 22-17, Nashville, and then uh, giveaways were 14 for Colorado, 2 for Nashville. That is a goofy stat, the giveaway. Like, they gave it up 14 times, we gave it up twice, and they beat our ass. I don't get it, but hey, it is what it is. Um... Starting off the scoring in the first period, go. Was McKe uh, was Kale McCarr, his second, with assist from uh, Nieto and Graves. Nieto's fourth, Graves' second of the year. Um, and then, well, Ryan Ellis scored his start of the year with an assist from uh, Ryan Johansson. Pretty good shot. Then uh, Nathan McKinnon got his ninth of the year with an assist from McCarr, his twelfth. Uh, I warned you guys about McCarr and McKinnon. Um, and uh, Bak Barkowski, his sixth. That was on the power play. Then the Preds struck. Um, they had Phil Forsberg with his seventh and his second goal in two games back from the injury. Uh, he's been back three games, has two goals in three games. 
Um, and then Matt Duchesne got his fifth. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, Forsberg seventh. I forgot the assist. Arvidsson with his fifth assist and Johansson with his 11th. Then on the power play, Duchesne scored his fifth with an assist from Arvidsson, his sixth, and Yossi, his 12th. Then uh, Jonas Donskoy got his, uh, the, his sixth goal of the year with an assist from McKinnon, his 11th, and Calvert, his sixth. Then Ryan Graves got his second with an assist from Nims and Kadri. And uh, Tyson Yost, his second. Then Andre Burakovsky got his fifth goal of the year with an assist from former Admiral slash Predator Vladislav Kamenev and Eric Johnson. Then Matt Nieto got his fourth of the year with an assist from uh, JT Comper and Ryan Graves. Uh, that is... Uh, okay, then Matt Calvert scored his fourth of the year with assist from McKinnon, his 12th, and Makar, his 13th. Then Donskoy got his second of the game, his seventh of the year, with an assist from Johnson, his second of the game, and McKinnon's like millions of points in this game. Then, Who was it that got the hat trick for Colorado? I'll get to that in a second. And Craig Smith got his second of the year with assist from Bones, uh, Nick Benino, and Grimaldi, his, uh, Benino's fifth, Grimaldi's seventh. And then Jonas Danskoy got a hat trick on the power play with assist from uh, Burakovsky and TJ Tynan. Uh, Danskoy's eighth, Burakovsky's seventh, and Tynan's first point of the year. Congrats on the call up, congrats on the first career hat trick. Let's get into the pay no mind list, and it is a long one. Let's see. Kyle Turris, Colton Sissons, Michaeli Arncrock, Rocco Grimaldi, Austin Watson, Mikel Granlin, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Ellis, Matias Ekholm, Dante Fabro, Roman Yossi. Let's get into the goalies. Not exactly the greatest. Pecorini stopped 17 of 22 for a .773 save percentage. He played 26 minutes, 57 seconds. Then Saros came in. He stopped 19 of 23 with a .826 save percentage. He played 33 minutes. Or 19 of 23 with a .826 save percentage. Still not the greatest. For uh, goalies for goalie for Colorado is Pavel Fracones. I hope I got that right. Uh, he stopped twenty and twenty four with a point eight three three save percentage. Uh, referees in the game were uh, Frederick McCour uh, and Kendrick Nicholson. Uh, linesmen were James Tobias and Brian Pachi. Uh, head coach for Nashville is Peter Laviolette. Jared Bernard is the head coach for Colorado. Uh, scratches in the game were Mika Salamaki and Matt Irwin. Uh, scratches for Colorado were Ian Cole and Philip Grubauer. Um, according to uh, what uh, Mason said during the post-game interview, Grubauer said he wasn't going to play today. He said it, so I don't know what the issue is there. Shots per period were this. 18 to 6 in the first two periods. So it was literally identical. 18 to 6 in the first, 18 to 6 in the second. And then it was 12-9 in the third for a total of 24 to 45. Three stars of the game were Ryan Graves, Nathan McKinnon, and that's the first star of the game, obviously, with a hat trick is Jonas Donskoy. Um, well, uh, let's uh, let's talk about this game a little bit, cause I mean I'm pretty sure we have some talking points of things we should talk about going forward. Um, up next for us, 
Uh, what do you mean us? We have two teams we cover. Be more specific. I know. I'm just saying up next, as far as our schedule for this show, is the Admirals versus San Antonio. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. However, like I said before, I was letting you look it up, look up stuff, um, or whatever you were looking at. What I was doing, I was tinkering with my laptop, because this thing's still new to me, and, I'm, and I was experiencing some bugs, because I was trying to keep up with him reading the stats. Ah. Um, I'm sorry, I was doing some on-air tinkering, dealing with some technical issues. Because, you know, in order for us to have a quality show, we need to make sure everything's functioning right. I've come to the conclusion, I need a mouse. <laughs> that stupid little pad right there is a pain in the butt. Ah, um, so, as far as your thoughts defensively on the team, too what soft? Defense? Too soft? Are they too soft? Well, I would say so, because they keep leaving their goalie hanging. Um, they're just not, they just didn't play aggressively today, man. Um, like seriously, if you know your goalie's having issues, you should probably step up your defensive game to kind of help them out. I mean, well, the one thing I saw in this, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> there were a lot of okay, got goals straight down the middle. They meaning, scored a, meaning that they were literally maybe two, three feet away from the net when they were able to score, and there were defensemen there, and they weren't knocking him, you know, basically knocking his block off. Honestly, I think they've become complacent, meaning they're comfortable. There's there's no urgency in the locker room. Honestly, I think the GM needs to start trading some of these guys away and show these guys uh, your job isn't permanent. If we want to get rid of you, we can a uh, goalie, I mean, not goalie, but a coach. Uh, maybe it's time for a new voice in the locker room. That's that's the, that's something me and him were discussing during the third period. Because, I, and, and I guess I could say, let's see how they do on Saturday. Because it, it all when you get smacked around like this. Because remember, they played kind of like this last year, too. It's reminding me a lot of how they played last year. But last year also, here's an odd stat for all of us. Um, the uh, every team between the Predators and every game between the Predators and the Avalanche, the 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 home team won. Yeah, that's a weird stat. But ever that was that was just one of those stats. Like it was literally a tie the whole season, and and uh, that happened. And what's even weirder, though, uh, before tonight, the last time the Preds and Avalanche played, the Avalanche beat the Predators by five, and today they win nine to four, beat us by five. Um, That's another weird stat, seeing how we're talking about weird stats. But I'm honestly thinking maybe it's time for a new voice, because Laviolette's been coached for a while. Everybody knows in pro hockey as well as other pro sports, all because you're a head coach, you don't mean you're going to have that just, job and, and, that and, team and, for and, and here's the thing. I'm not taking they anything. You have to do something to like shock the system, no pun intended, of the Predators locker room. Um, but I think that I'm not taking away from what Laviolette is as a coach. He's a good yeah, coach. Yeah, he's been a great coach, but after a while, yeah. I mean, like... Kind of like the Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy dynamic. That worked well for so many years. After a while, it just kind of lost stale. its effect. It got Maybe stale. Maybe that's the lobby light thing. Maybe his uh, coaching style is getting stale in the locker room. But the, at the same time, it is also... See how guys rebound from this one. Because yeah. you basically... The, the Avalanche went out there and went... Not to mention that uh, Avalanche, they were really hungry because coming into tonight, they were on a five-game losing streak. You and me should have took that into account that they had a they had more motivation to play hard compared to the Predators. Now, the one thing I am, uh, uh, as far as, like, I'm looking at this uh, unbiasedly, um, the one thing that does worry me as far as, like, me being a fantasy sports guy for hockey, I do play fantasy hockey. Yeah, I don't play fantasy. And hockey. I do have I, Nath- I do have Nathan McKinnon on my team. Uh, he did not play the whole third period. He did not come back out um, at all. So that's got me a little. I, I, if you're an Avalanche fan 
Or say the Avalanche is your second favorite team, you know, you're an old hockey fan and you liked them before the Preds came in the league and you still pay attention now and again or you play fantasy hockey, I'd keep an eye out for that. But tonight, if you got had those had him and Kale McCarr on your team, you did really well. So is it Kale or is it Callie? Kale McCarr. Kale McCarr, okay. And no, we're not doing any dude where's my car jokes. You did those already during the game, remember? I did like 10 of them. Yeah, remember? During the game. Uh, yeah, he'd get a point and I'd be like, oh, there's my car. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, so, so, um, but you would agree, like, if they fail to bounce back. Uh, How long do you let the slide happen? Yeah, like, because, like I said, the GM has the ability to send these guys places whether they get demoted to Milwaukee or just traded in general. I they think have to I, do I, I, to shake I, it up. I, I'm looking at it, and the one thing that sticks out to me, and, and, and maybe I'm wrong in this, but is it me or is Favreau slipping down the defensive depth chart? Yeah. Maybe because I saw him use playing with, with um, Ekholm a lot. Is it time that they maybe bring somebody from Milwaukee up? And well, go, who from Milwaukee do you think Nashville should call up? Seeing how you're talking about a call-up send-down situation. Who in Milwaukee do you think deserves a defensive call? The only guy who's a plus seven, has ten assists, and two goals. Tell the people that may not know. Watch this. He's going to have a heart attack and die, but Alexander Carrier. Your buddy. Wow, look at you. Uh, Carrier has been playing lights out up here. Agreed. And or down here. Or down here. Well, up uh, geographically. We're not down, talking geographically. We're talking uh, system uh, structure down here. Yeah, up geographically, down systemly. <laughs> I was yeah, just but, getting into wow. it. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think Carrier. I think that um, uh, after what I've seen, Daniel Carr may deserve another shot. <clears throat> And Daniel Carr might actually enjoy playing in Nashville. Wait, was he supposed to start the season in Nashville in general? But he and then they sent him to... down and kept Salamaki up there, and Salamaki's been riding the pine. So what's the point of Salamaki? Is he trade bait or not? I don't know. I, I mean, and and, and like this I is... said, they need to shake something up. Something Here's has the thing. to give. I know it's Here's only the, the second month of the year, and I might be overreacting, but you can't let guys become complacent. Well, the one thing I was going to say... that's the way I say that word. Yes, complacent, meaning that they're feeling comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Dog. I'm trying to use a big word. <laughs> yeah, Look I'm at the college student. <laughs> anyway, um, but no, uh, I think when you look at it, and, and this is just the guys that I think would be, at this point, trade bait for even kind of movement to see what you could get out of it. Yeah. Um, I know I don't like it, and you're not going to like it, but Mikel Granlin, he hasn't done much. No, he he doesn't seem to fit the Preds' structure, and, you know, it was a nice try, but how long do you let the trial and error go where you're let, he's playing fourth line minutes. Yeah. And he, what well, used in to be theory, a... In theory, he should be riding the pine in somebody like, uh... And, and, and even to say this, I'd rather have, I said this, I'd rather have Tolvin and out there making rookie mistakes than have a veteran out there making rookie mistakes. Yeah. Well, hey, if you got to let Granlin go, just hope and pray you get somebody good in return because you don't want to give him up because you never know. Maybe he's one of those late starters. You hear that all the time in the NHL, guys that start slow, but they turn it on like, yeah, I guess, I, I I mean, I'm not trying to it, jump the gun, but that there are guys like Turris. Turris, okay, let's look at Turris. Turris has done jack squat over the last three years. Uh, this is going into your third year since that Duchesne deal, and you've done... What do you mean since the Duchesne deal? This is Duchesne's first... No, year. since Duchesne got traded from the Avalanche to Ottawa, and oh, Ottawa sent us... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kamenev, or we sent Kamenev to Colorado and we got who in return? We sent Kamenev and Gerard and a second round pick for Turris? 
Now, look, now, now Wait, hear Taurus me up. was with Colorado? I thought... Taurus I was getting traded to Colorado. Nashville wanted him. Mm. So, Colorado went, well, we'll take Kamenev and, and Gerard when Ellis was coming back. Now, just hear me out, Preds fans, because imagine how good our defense would be had we actually stayed pat and let things play out the way they were and go back and Duchesne come in with uh, Gerard, Fabro, uh, Ellis, Ekholm, Yossi. I mean, do you think the PK deal might have screwed up the system a bit? No, because here's the thing, and then I'm gonna say this about because who did we give up to get PK again? Uh, we gave up Shea Weber. Okay. And Shea Weber has done nothing in in Montreal. You don't even hear about him anymore. Nope. It's kind of like the Ryan Suter effect. Yeah, you don't hear a squat about Suter and Nash in our in Minnesota, other than fans getting bored with his contract. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's the thing. We're just talking about guys here. I do not want to see the same thing where guys feel complacent in their contracts. Yeah, Yossi got a no movement clause, but the rest of these guys don't have them. The only guy that does, other than him, is Pekka and Duchesne. And Pekka already said, give him a few more years and he's going to retire. But he wants a cup, so let's try to get a Stanley Cup for Pekka, shall we? And, and I guess, like like I said right now, um, there are moves you can make. Most don't... importantly, let's get Daniel a Stanley Cup. Let's not make me go old and gray. Yet. Uh, yeah, it's just... I, 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 I got the me. old part down, but the gray part I'm not ready for. I, I'm i looking forward to gray hair. <laughs> what? I know it's going to happen as long as I don't go... As long as I keep my hair, I don't care if it goes gray. But if I go fall, there'll be an issue. <laughs> but no, I do not look good bald. No, I don't. No, you've never seen me bald, so shut up. I've seen you with short hair. That's not bald, though. You don't look right with short hair either. You confuse me. <laughs> People say I confuse them with long hair. Dude, what's up with this stereotype that only girls can have long hair? Uh, well, that stereotype's not kind of stupid. But this ain't the time or place to discuss that. We were. Talking about what the Predators need to do to try to shake themselves out of this funk. Well, hey, like, notice everybody, the beard's gone. It's all your fault. <laughs> well, shut up. Um, no. It's all your fault. We don't have the traditional back. We only ha we have purple instead of white. Ha! You broke the karma. Eh, can't go purple no more. Sorry. Ah, look at you. No, nah, it wouldn't be I know, I know. We're keeping it because of the cause. I was just uh, cracking a joke. But no. But you can't wear that hoodie, though. Yeah, I can. I didn't wear it when we started. I put it on after we were already down 8 to 3. Uh, well, it failed, to, it failed, so you got to start over again. I can't wear this. I got to wear my other hoodie. Yeah, I, I, I guess at this point, what we got to do is just, you know. The thing is, when you, when they went in the locker room today, and oh, would I have loved to be a fly on the wall to hear what Laviolette has to say. Probably didn't do anything. Well, he coaches with no anger, no intensity, no passion. It's almost like the passion's been sucked out of Laviolette. What's going on in that? What's going on in that team that we're not hearing about? What's going on behind the scenes between the GM, the owner, and Laviolette? He's, he's coaching like he has no passion, or else his defense sort of came out and actually helped Pekka. Because clearly, I think there was something well, going on. Well, the other Pekka thing tonight. that like the other thing that ir the other thing that irritated me is after you got the lead and gave up the lead right back. Yeah. Why didn't you call a timeout to go get your guys together and go? And maybe draw up a play. They do do that in hockey, drop a play on the bench. Even if you just read your guys the riot act and just, you know, ripped them a new one. Start taking a hockey stick and smacking these guys upside the head. Go old school with it. Start treating them like Mark Harmon versus, uh... What is up with you and the Mark Harmon references today? I get he's a good actor, but damn, dude. Uh, yeah, I, for I forgot. Yeah, you've been using his reference a lot. I thought he was dead the way you kept quoting him. Well, no, some people just deserve a good smack in the back of the head. Like Red Foreman says, a good swift kick in the ass ought to get it done. 
Yeah, I mean, and that's the point. The, and maybe this is the uh, proverbial kick. What, where to kick in the ass they need? No, this game. Oh. Yeah. Well, a, a, a famous coach once said that sometimes you kick ass and sometimes you are the ass. Well, another famous coach said, if you lose, you're out of the family. <laughs> And if you don't know who that is, I should punch you. You live in the same state that he got famous in. Vince Lombardi said that, dude. How do you not know that? And you call yourself a Packer fan. For shame. I don't know. Hang your head in shame. Nope. That's one of Vince Lombardi's most famous quotes. If you lose, you're out of the family. Well, and that, this is this is just where we're at right now, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty sad. On a hockey show, we have to resort to that because this game was such hot garbage. I don't even want to look at the damn screen right now. Uh, yeah. Well, but, hey, we need to do something. We need to do it fast. Hey, if you guys have any ideas, uh, drop us a message. Or comment on the video oh, that's down below. Or, comment. Or, yeah, or shoot us oh, a message. Oh, when the hell are we going to go live? Maybe we could do some live chatting to see what the fan base has to say, you know, via live video. Uh, it's been a while since I've been part of a live stream. I believe we were going to do that Sunday after the recap video, after which, I upload it. Oh. Well, which... Wait, do the Sunday? play Sunday? No, Admirals do. Alright, yeah. Well, yeah, we could always talk to the Admiral fans and see what they have to think. Preds fans will join too. Go yeah. ahead. Hey, if you're a fan of our show, we will be going live on Sunday. Chat. We'll probably talk Predator and Admiral talk. He oh. might have given fans of the Admirals a heart attack by saying Carrier should go up. Because if you've been watching our show since last season, he used to rip the crap out of Carrier. And still now do. Carrier is on his way up in his eyes. Still do. I still do. He is playing good, though. He is playing good. I will give him I'm not going to break my streak if he, he didn't start doing well until I started ripping him. So why would I? I mean, I give him credit. When well, fine. Start do. ripping the Predators hardcore. Just go hardcore. Bury one Predator player. Just bury him. I'm going to start burying Pitlick here in a minute. He's a minus 12. Yeah, but you know what's sad about like the Predators players? They don't pay attention to us like the Admirals do. No, I don't think so. I don't well, think anybody in the Predator organization even knows we exist. <laughs> like, seriously, I highly doubt anybody with the Predators knows we exist. Maybe some of their beat writers from you chat with them on Twitter. But other than that, I don't think anybody within that organization knows we're here. But we're here, and we ain't going anywhere. Yeah, I, this is just one of those, uh, you know, the old, the old cliche, Mama said there are going to be days like this. Yeah, right. Mama said knock you out. Ooh, that's yeah. what oh, Cool J said. Yeah, yeah well, we, uh, well, sad part is we're the ones that got knocked out. Unfortunately. All right, man. Is there any more you want to talk about? Because uh, there's only so much uh, speculation and who should go where that we can do. Uh, Where's the notebook? Oh, yeah. I forgot. We got to do that, don't we? Yes, we have a video coming tomorrow of the Admirals versus the San Antonio Rams. Did you say a video coming tomorrow or a game tomorrow? Both. Well, if you say a game, they already assume we're going to do a video, right? Yeah. Well, they know we do videos after every game. All right, anyways, tomorrow the Milwaukee Admirals are on the road taking on division rivals, the San Antonio Rampage. All right, you got Nathan Walker, 11 games played, 8 goals, 6 assists. You got Derek uh, Pouliot, uh, 11 games played, 2 goals, 8 assists. Uh, you got Austin Poganski, 11 games played, 2 goals, 7 assists. Uh, you got Tam, uh, Cam Darcy, 11 games played, 1 goal, 7 assists. And Mike uh, Vishon. Mike Vishon, 11 games. Uh, yeah, 11 games played, 7 goals. <sighs> yeah, no assists. All right, um... San Antonio is 3-2 in their last five. This is the first meeting with the Admirals this season. Uh, the last meeting between these two teams was on April 3rd. Milwaukee won that one 3-2. Uh, this season, they are currently 6-2, two, 2-2 two and two in second place in the Central. We're in our third. Yeah, so that's why they're our rivals. We're doing battle with them. All right, the last five, in the last five games, Nate Walker has uh, four goals, four assists. 
Uh, Derek Pouliot, he had one goal, six assists. And Austin Paganski, one goal, four assists. Uh, goalies, you got Adam Wilcox, one, zero, and two. And then you got with a goals against average of 2.57. And then what is that? Vileo? Ville Husso. He's a 5 2 and 1, 5 2 and 1 record with a 2 6 5 goals against. Uh, and yeah, that's the preview for the av or not Avalanche, but uh, Rampage. Well, you almost thought of Rampage because they used to be the Avalanche's minor league club back in the day. Yeah, I remember that when I first started going to Admiral Games. At, Before uh, the Screaming Eagles took over. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tune in tomorrow. We'll be covering that game and then we'll be back at it. Uh, when do the Predators play again? Saturday. We'll um, be back and at it Saturday the, and then we'll be back at it Sunday. Yeah, um, the Saturday video, uh, we it'll be a late one, so um, it's the game starts at 9. Yeah, because they're on the uh, West Coast. Yeah, um, and uh, God only knows when we're going to be done with what we're doing. We have a buddy's birthday to that we're, party we're attending. Yeah, so, so we, Saturday is going to be a f interesting evening. Yeah. We'll be sipping a bit of the bubbly. Yeah, hopefully no, not No, we're much. actually going to be drinking some champagne. Yeah, uh, that... Uh, it's his birthday. He's about to turn 30. He's he's going to celebrate... Oh, he's been on this show before. Uh, Josh. He, for all of you who watch every video of ours, he's been yeah, on a couple Yeah, our buddy Josh. Yeah, he's been on a couple of our shows. And if you watch both of our podcasts, the wrestling one, we do... Uh, yeah, Mr. Oakley. Man's about to hit 30. But he, he uh, it's a good day. Um, By the way, for those no, of you... it wasn't a good day, but it's been a good video. I well, enjoyed, I mean, I mean our good, video's been more entertaining and pleasant than the game itself. No, what I'm saying is it's been a good day just hanging out as as for us. Oh, right? yeah, you and me just hanging out all day, yeah. yeah that's never bad, though. As soon as I got out of school today, I came over here, and we've been kicking it. Um, also, if you want um, us over the month uh, to uh, shout out who you fight for with Hockey Fights Cancer, drop a comment on the original video. Um, and we will, uh, I will try to get to them all. Or shoot him a message, or shoot me and Christopher. Or, well, don't shoot me, but shoot me a message. Hey! <laughs> yeah, if you want to be friends with me on Facebook, it's uh, Christopher Draves. You can uh, shoot the names will there. be here, or um, one will be yeah, there. Yeah, after and Mr. One uh, one. Editor here edits our stuff. Yeah, um, there are some videos that, you know, if we get to it a little late, we kind of skimp on the editing, but... Uh, just... Anyways, I'd say let's wrap it. We've been babbling on a bit. They already got the meat and potatoes of the video. They got their preview. I think we could go home now. Yep, uh, so this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by... Our good friends at Hockey Locker. You can visit them at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com or... Go to 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, walk in their store. Uh, they have everything you need for hockey or call them to find out if you need, if they have what you need at 414-800-7585. And this... Oh, watch our videos, like us, subscribe to us, uh, follow us, whatever, tell your friends, spread the word. Help us hit 700. That's our new goal, 700. Yep. So I can't believe we're actually saying that. Our new goal is 700. Yep. I our, like that feeling. We're growing, guys. I love it. We're growing. 